scholars like Ibn al-Qayyim, they mention some of the tremendous benefits of sabr and how a person can inculcate sabr in himself. So from those ways and means is that he should think about the rewards and the benefits of sabr. How does he do that? By looking at the stories of the prophets. You have heard in the last few days the stories of numerous of the prophets of Musa alayhi salam, of Suleiman alayhi salam, of Salih, of Nuh, and other than them, Yusuf alayhi salam. And so you recall the great rewards and the aid that Allah gave to these prophets and messengers. Secondly, you think about how patience, it removes the sins and erases the sins. Thirdly, you bring to mind that this affair that you were afflicted with and this trial, that it is from the qadr of Allah and that it is decreed to happen before you were even created. So to be aware of that and to know that will help you to traverse through this, this, this trial. Likewise, to witness the fact that Allah has a right upon you in this trial. What is that right? His right is that you show patience as a minimum and that you are pleased with this trial according to some of the scholars, which is which some scholars say that it is, it is uh, mustahab according to other scholars. Likewise, that you acknowledge that this trial has come to you as a result of your sin. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا تَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whatever trial or calamity comes to you, then it is on account of what your hands have earned. And this is general. For every single sin, small, or every single trial or calamity, small or large, when a person acknowledges this, he will be preoccupied with istighfar, seeking forgiveness from Allah, as Yunus alayhi salam did, and which was the reason why, why he was he was forgiven. Istighfar it repels the sin, it repels the calamity. As Ali bin Abi Talib said, "Ma nazala balaun illa bidham, wala rufi'a illa bi tawbatin." No calamity descended except by way of a sin, and nor was it raised except by way of tawbah, by way of tawbah. Likewise, he acknowledges that Allah Zawajal has decreed and is happy for this calamity for him, and that his ubudiyah, his worship and servitude to Allah is something that demands patience from him. Likewise, that he acknowledges that this musibah is like a medicine for him. The analogy is medicine. Every trial, every calamity that comes to you, think of it as medicine. Just like you dislike medicine, dislike medicinal treatment, dislike an operation, dislike a harm, you know, a, a bitter a medicine, and it makes you feel uncomfortable, and makes you feel uneasy, then this is the analogy of trials and tribulations upon a person. Every trial that comes to you, it is just like medicine. And by medicine, Allah Azawajal, He is, He wants to cure you. He wants to bring you back to your health, which is to, to uh, uh, improve your iman and better your iman and remove you of the illnesses which lurk inside of you, the illnesses of the heart, the diseases of the heart. This is how a believer looks at, looks at trials and calamities and it helps him to get through them. Likewise, you should realize on top of this, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions that at the end of it all, just like a person knows that after the, 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 the medicine, that he will eventually be cured and retain his health, then likewise, at the end of this trial, there will be afiyah, there will be sihha, there will be the pain, the, 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 the pain that he feels as a result of the trial that will go. And as Allah he says in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Perhaps you dislike a thing, but it is good for you. And perhaps you like a thing, love a thing, but it is evil for you and harmful for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. So this is the nature of calamities. This is how we should see calamities and trials. Likewise, Ibn al-Qayyim says that he should know that the calamity is not going to kill him and make him perish. Rather, it is a means by which he's being tested. And it is, it is to see to see, is he going to become from the awliya of Allah? 
and from the party of Allah or not? Is he going to be chosen by Allah through this trial or not? This is how he should see this musibah or this calamity. And finally he says, Ibn Qayyim, that by way of as-sarra, terms of ease, al-darra, terms of hardship, and ni'mah, favors, al-bala, calamities, all of these things are things by which Allah is giving, He is nurturing a person. And a person in each of these situations, he must maintain his ubudiyah to Allah. So whether you are in times of ease and plenty, you are a slave to Allah. You are giving ubudiyah to Allah. Whether it is a time of hardship, you are giving ubudiyah to Allah. Whether you are in the favors of Allah, you are giving ubudiyah to Allah. Whether you are in poverty and difficulty, you are in the favors of Allah. Meaning, in every situation amongst the situations you could possibly be in, you are giving ubudiyah to Allah. And this is what we find from the stories and the lessons of the prophets. That Yunus alayhi salam, when he was in the belly of the fish, one darkness, in the darkness of the ocean, a second darkness, in the darkness of a night, a third darkness. And he acknowledged his mistake, and he made istighfar, he made tawbah, he was from the musabbihin, the one who would uh, glorify and exalt Allah. Then Allah, he, he maintained his ubudiyah. And Allah Azawajal, He saved him and He gave him deliverance. So, from this, we learn that making tasbih of Allah, being from the musabbihin, is a cause of safety from the trials. And this is another lesson that we learn from the ayah that we read. فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّهِينَ لَلَّبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ That had he not been from those who glorified Allah, then he would remain in the belly of the fish up until the day they are resurrected. The Mufassirun, they say, they explain what this means. What does it mean when Allah says, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّهِينَ That had he not been from those who glorified Allah. What does this mean? The Mufassirun, they say, that had he not had righteous deeds in the times of ease. Meaning that in the times of ease, Yunus alayhi salam was one who had righteous deeds, he would worship Allah, he would remember Allah. Had it not been for that, then he would remain in the belly of the fish. This is said by Abd Dahaq, Abu Aliya, Wahab ibn Munabbih, Atada, and other than this is what they mean. That when Allah says, had he not been from the Musabbihin, Meaning one who in the times of ease in his life, he was a worshipper of Allah, he was pious, he was righteous, he remembered Allah. And because of that, because he was grateful to Allah in times of ease, then Allah removed his calamity in the time of hardship. And likewise, another view from Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, Sa'id ibn Jubair, al dahaq Ata, another than them, Al-Hasan Al-Qatada, they said, Yani al musalleen That he was from those who used to pray. That he was from those who prayed in abundance. That because he was from the musalleen, that's why he was saved. And there's a third view, and that view is, and in fact all of them are, can, can be correct at the same time. The third view is, is that the uh, when he says, min al musabbihin in this ayah, that he was from those who glorify Allah, it is a reference to another part in the Quran in which he says, Fanada, meaning that unity called out, Fidhulumat, in the darknesses, Allah ilaha illa ant, Subhanak, inni kuntu min al So Yunus, he called out in the darknesses that there is none which has a right to be worshipped except you. Subhanak, how free you are of imperfections. Indeed, I was from those who were the wrongdoers. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So we responded to him and we delivered him from his grief, from the hardship, and thus do we save and deliver the believers. So now it means that when he was in the belly of the fish, he actually made tasbih of Allah. He said, Subhanak. So, this ayah, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّهِينَ can refer to that as well. 
And so the point being that all of, the, all of these three explanations, they are not contradicted, they can all work together. So he was one who remembered Allah in the times of ease. He was someone who constantly prayed. And in the calamity itself, he made tasbih of Allah. So all of this is tasbih of Allah. All of these explanations and interpretations uh, can work together and they are one and the same. So the point being that a person, how does he escape from calamities and hardships in his life? He makes tasbih of Allah. He remembers him in times of ease. He is constant in prayer. He makes the, the nawafil prayers. And he's constant in making tasbih, saying subhanallah, and the various adhkar after the prayers and other situations. And he will find that Allah Azawajal will relieve the, calamit, the calamities from him on the basis of that. And then on top of this as well, the scholars, they mention the tremendous benefits of dhikr. Because Yunus alayhi salam, he remembered Allah in that difficult situation. And so we see that the scholars, uh, like Ibn al-Qayyim, in fact, uh, we see in the hadith, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرْ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرْ رَبَّهُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The likeness of the one who remembers his Lord and does not, is like the, like, like the likeness of the living and the dead. And there are many other statements like this that speak about dhikr. We'll finish very quickly by mentioning some tremendous benefits of dhikr itself. And these are benefits that we see the scholars like Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn al-Qayyim, when they discuss the issue of uh, Yunus alayhi salam and the dhikr in the belly of the fish, that these are some of the benefits we should remember about dhikr itself. First of all, it is something that repels shaitan and breaks shaitan. Every time you make dhikr of Allah, it is as if, like if you imagine that you have a hammer and you are striking some malleable, like copper for example, that you are the one who is controlling, you are the one who is in control, not shaitan in control of you. So dhikr is the one who is, is something that puts you in control. And you attack shaitan with it, you break shaitan with it. Secondly, it pleases ar-Rahman. Thirdly, it removes grief and anxiety from your heart. It makes your heart to feel happiness and to rejoice. It strengthens your heart and your body. It, put light, it puts light on your face and in your heart. It brings rizq from Allah Azza wa Jal. Remembrance of Allah is something that draws out the rizq of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it brings about muraqaba, that you are observant of Allah, constantly observant of Allah, fearing Him. It brings about inaba, that you constantly return to Allah. It makes you closer to Allah. And it makes you inherit this awe of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Himself will mention you as Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ That if you remember me, I shall remember you. And so Ibn al-Qayyim al mentions about 30 or 40 tremendous benefits. These are just some of them. And with that, we'll conclude our lesson there today. These are some of the tremendous benefits which you can take from the story of Yunus alayhi salam in particular. Just to summarize, that number one, we must always be constant in da'wah and never give up, irrespective of whether we receive a response or not. Because Allah Azawajal, we do not know His Qadr, and guidance is in Allah's hands. We maintain, continue to, to command the good and prohibit the evil in our societies, calling to Tawheed, never giving up, taking the example of the prophets and messengers whose stories you have heard over the past few days. And number two, the necessity of having sabr and not giving up. Number three, the benefit of uh, the issue of the prophets and messengers and the issue of major sin and minor sin and the tafsil of Ahlul Sunnah regarding that issue. Uh, number four, making tawbah to Allah, making istighfar, making dhikr and the tremendous benefits that these have upon a person and the calamities that he faces in his life. So all of these are some of the general broad benefits we can take from this story. And with that we'll conclude our lesson there for today. I ask Allah to uh, give us tawfiq, to benefit us and to give us tawfiq in acting practically upon that which we have heard. 
and wajazakumullahu khairan walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in